coming up. Of course, every weekday at 7, you can hear me, Marky e. Bilson, with the Five State Sunrise, and I'll be talking to Erica Maddox of the Guyman Chamber of Commerce in a few minutes, and then I'll be talking to uh, two women, Sarah Atha and the president of the American Theater Board, Ashley Ortiz. They've got a lot of Christmas movies, and they've got a lot of... Uh, They've got those coming in, so looking forward to that. KGYN, Guyman Liberal, K292HG, Liberal, a Steckline Communications Station, 1210-1063, KGYN. Kansas Mid-America Network News, I'm Trace Tall. Emporia police have arrested a 20-year-old for distributing drugs after finding him with cocaine, marijuana, and LSD. Officers also found drugs at an Emporia State fraternity as part of the investigation. Caden Hunt was arrested Monday on suspicion of distributing and selling controlled substances. An Emporia State spokeswoman confirmed Hunt is currently enrolled at the university. Lawrence police say one man has died after a standoff that began in the afternoon hours. Officers attempted to serve an out-of-town warrant at an apartment in the 1700 block of Ohio Street. Just before 6 p.m., they heard a single gunshot come from inside the apartment. They were serving the warrant. As officers backed away from the apartment, they established the perimeter and called for additional assistance. By apartments were evacuated. Officers entered the apartment at 9 p.m. and a demand with immediately available. Kansas Minute Network News. I'm doing you a huge favor. Politics apologizing is a bad thing. You will look like a statesman. Walk back mistake. Just walk it back. It's a rough time. Whatever. Blame it on you had a couple uh, course lights less. I don't know. Just retreat. This is good idea. Show your campaign. Live middays on Five State Big Talker. KGY and Bond Show.
Your weather is brought to you have life. and supporters in the cause of community anxiety. LLS supported research have led to breakthrough for many cancers and other serious. Join the movement at Lockdown. I'm Lator and Gaiman. Some clouds in the morning will give way to the afternoon. Our will be 40 seconds up to 10 hours. Next time, push down to 2 hours. Next time, push down to 2 hours. Say, please complete up with your big talker weather. I'm Mark Hughes. At 06, sorry, I can't be great. The vibes are getting quiet. And we had a big political show yesterday. Things are around and matching on. Uh, we'll talk to Mark Hughes. We'll talk to Mark Hughes. What's going on in Mill Hutch? The biggest city in the place in the Oklahoma panhandle. We'll be discussing the Christmas events. Uh, dropping in out of it at 545. In the afternoon, the city hall. And anyhow, that's the big event going on. That'll be in a few in about, oh, I'd say, 45-ish. And it looks like they're going to play Beauty and the Beast that they're going to be putting on come to springtime. And it takes on play. So we'll be talking a little bit about that at the American Theater. Looking forward to uh, dis- to discussing that. that. I wanted to talk, you know, yesterday we had a big political show. And I guess... You know, we were promoting the DeSantis uh, some debate was shown. The number one talk show in the country, Our Talkers Magazine. And we'll be having, we we'll talking to uh, the on yesterday. We didn't hear the cowboys. Three, nine and three. Being a touchdown last night in the number 35. We have so many low school games so far. That's a question game. Anyway, there is uh, right there in our lobby, if you will. I, I see it. I just want to talk a little bit about the, uh, just. You know, Sean Hannity may be the number one talk show host on the radio, and I'm listening to But boy, he's a desire to uh, do something to do but talking back and forth. And debate to... to, 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 to. There was talk... California's losing population. And you know, Florida is not a population. So anyone who has had to do some there, knew some trying to say, well, more Floridians move into California. What is it? I assume they must just be completely out of the states. It's refreshing that it's not Oklahoma, and I'll be brutally honest with you there. Okay? What does it mean? I, I just did not get that at all. I want to give to DeSantis uh, Rogers, you can see it and hear it on uh, the Monday morning. I really don't recall yesterday on the show, which is on Facebook, and I'm not sure what I'm But just so much did it. it was, I mean, you know, there was the talk about the banning of a thousand books. And then there's some changes. The idea you're is like above You know, I want to be the end of the I just didn't, you know, uh, going, oh, you're having the vision for this sort of thing. This guy, yeah, well, uh, it's a back and forth, not did too, and we got a very disappointing debate. Now, there's the idea that, and it's a show, the debates, you say one, who you were going in. That's not absolute or anything. I kind of sensed that would, and that's what that had developed. I'm not sure if there's no Jack Henry at any point. It just was more talking over the screening. With Sean Hannity, I was going to vote last week on all this. This is a, and I know it's difficult because you got 90s. You can say, oh, Chris Mason, read it. Great, that's not going to happen. But still, the amount of overreach is very disappointing. Really, these two guys, even though Gavin just sent us a run for president, they're trying to say yesterday, Derek Cope campaigns. And he had He had a big lead and all of a sudden his tire blew. And then he's running second, and he just sort of eases over, you know, oh, this is nice. I win the race. I think Cope only won like three races in his entire NASCAR career. But that that's kind of what they're over. They're hoping that something, you know, Joe Biden decides, you know.
Hunter Biden or, uh, you know, I, I want to take time to smell the roses or for whatever reason he doesn't want to run again. You know, uh, Joe Biden says, no, 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 I'm going to, you know, then a Gavin Newsom becomes a candidate. If Donald Trump, the legal uh, situations get on him, then Gavin Newsom might be Derek Cotton. So uh, I did like that uh, DeSantis picked up the ball uh, about anti-Semitism, the Gavin Newsom, you know, that we had too much and, and started speaking, not attacking uh, the other so much, uh, but rather, you know, both of them spoke out against it. That was the one time they really didn't speak over each other. So that was a positive. But still, uh, just very disappointing. And I just looking at Twitter, uh, I see, you know, new scum is tw- is uh, advancing on Twitter or trending or, the, you know, that or it's X now, excuse me. But still. Uh, I really think it's kind of the candidate that you were for coming in is the one that you thought won, especially when it became did not, did two, did not, did two. Erica Maddox, she's coming up next. Guyman, Chamber of Commerce. Ag weather from the Mid-American Ag Network. I'm Andy Hoosier as we kick off a Thursday or Friday today, final day of the week going into another weekend and kicking off the month of December, finally getting into winter season as most of the harvest is pretty much wrapped up around the area. But as we look at the finals with corn and soybeans, cotton harvest also seems to be wrapping up, according to U.S. Department of Agriculture meteorologist Brad Rippey, where we look at some of the conditions for cotton, especially from here in Kansas and northward. We have reached 77 percent of the U.S. cotton harvested by November 19th, significantly ahead of the five-year average of 71%. This is the second year in a row we've seen a pretty quick cotton harvest. Last year at this time, we were at 78%. Of the 15 reporting states, seven of them achieved double-digit harvest progress during the week ending November 19th. Fifty-five to seventy-five percent harvested, coming closer to the five-year average of eighty-one percent. Other states besides California that did have that double-digit harvest progress for the week scattered across the country, and that list includes Alabama, Arizona, North Carolina, Oklahoma. Harvested. Temperatures tonight, not a whole lot of difference between the night and daytime temperatures right now with overnights tonight going into the upper 20s or low 30s overall. By Saturday, we're going to see maybe a little bit of precipitation and rain in that eastern sliver of Kansas going into Missouri. Outside of that, mostly clear skies. Temperatures getting back up into the mid 40s overall by Sunday, uh, right around the mid to upper 40s as well, which continues on into the early part of next week. Seems like we're almost getting a bit of a fall season in the almost winter time now. Egg weather from the Mid America Egg Network. Rusty Egg Ford has been serving our customers in Wichita and all over Kansas for 70 years. Rusty Egg Ford is the new Ford or Blue Advantage certified pre-owned vehicle you are looking for online, in stock, and ready for delivery. Our finance team will help you with the best finance options available. Need your car serviced? Rusty Egg Ford has factory certified technicians to care for all your auto repair needs. We can pick up and drop off your vehicle for service, and our mobile service van can come to your home, work, or fleet for most routine maintenance needs. Been in a wreck? Call Eck. Our certified professionals can work on all makes and models. We work with your insurance company to get you back on the road as soon as possible. Rusty Eck Ford is Wichita's only president's award-winning dealership three years running. Come see us today at 7310 East Kellogg or online at RustyEckFord.com and drive home your new Ford today. And remember, if you don't come see us today, we can't save you any money. Absolutely unbeatable. You are round MVP. Yeah, man. Yo, Drew, I finally got round MVP. Round MVP. <laughs> no way. That was some ownage. It's a good thing you got me as your wingman. Right. You mean when you threw that flash grenade at me? Whatever, man. Huge round. Seriously, great stuff. Finally earning round MVP takes determination. So will getting into college. I've got what it takes. All right, class. I'm going to pass back your tests. And a high score goes to... 
Brian. Oh, oh. yeah, high score, baby. We're all good at something. Maybe it's break dancing or skateboarding or video games. Whatever you're good at, you have the skills to make it happen. And those same skills will help you get to college. Visit knowhowtogo.org to learn what you should be doing right now to prepare for college. Start taking the steps at knowhowtogo.org. I've got what it takes. So do you. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation, and the Ad Council. The Five State Big Talker, KGYN. We're back with Erica Maddox, Chamber of Commerce, Guyman. You're the you're the one that runs that place, are you not? I'm the director. Yes, yes sir. okay. But uh, the person that runs the North Pole is coming to town. Actually, Santa Claus, I believe, five forty-five. Giving the reindeer a break, dropping in off of helicopter and coming to City Hall. Is the helicopter going to land, or I mean, is he doing a a shoot jump? Or tell us well, about Santa Claus coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's supposed to be arriving at five forty-five by helicopter. Depending on what the weather is doing, how well that cooperates, we'll see how that all works out. After he drops into town at 545, he'll be available at Zach's Cheese for photos with the kiddos and to talk to them about what they'd like for Christmas this year. And then, of course, parents can shop the downtown open house, Christmas open house. We've got over 30 shops that are going to be open tonight with refreshments and specials and all kinds of fun things going on downtown. They can drop off their kids at Main Street Guyman from 6 to 9 for milk and cookies and oh, wow. Christmas making Christmas decorations while they're shopping so they don't have to chase the kiddos through the stores. Um, so that's going on downtown. And then we have the lighting of our of our park at Sunset, Home for the Holidays. It's, it happens tonight as well. We have performances starting on the stage at 5.30 um, and drumline at, at 5.50 with the welcome and thank you and the actual lighting of the park taking place at 6 o'clock. The train will be running free, courtesy of Bank of the Panhandle, and so and then of course that lights display will be up all all December, so you can go out there all the month of December and enjoy the lights out there at Sunset at Sunset Park. So now, tell me some, uh, and I forgive me if my uh, questions here are a bit elementary, a newcomer, but I think those are probably the best kind of questions too because they don't leave anything out on the table. When you mention like a, a Christmas train for the kids, I guess to ride in and all that, that's going on in the in the park. You say yes, that's at Sunset Lake. That's the Lions train, and it'll be running. Um, it'll be running this evening, and then it has other evenings that it'll be running as well. And it's not just for kids; adults can ride it too. And so, and this, and for tonight, Bank of the Panhandle has has purchased the train, so it's free to anyone who wants to ride this evening. So, otherwise, it's I think I believe it's three dollars a ride if if no one has sponsored it for that evening. But it's sponsored for several nights throughout December. So now you can get out and enjoy the lights. Drum lines can be fun. Uh, the I. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I actually uh, uh, have season tickets, so I go to a lot of games, uh, perhaps not as many as I will when I'm at uh, Guyman. But they actually, a few years ago, came up with a drum line. They came, I called it a steel line. And it was just a fun thing, you know, between uh, commercials to sort of keep you, you know, in the mood and all that. Now, is this going to be a walking drum line or is it sort of uh, a set? What? Tell me about the drum line. I'm intrigued by that. Well, they are going to perform on the stage, so there'll be a there'll be a set drum line, and they are actually from um, the high school. They're part of the part of the band at the high school and got together and want to perform in our for our Christmas open for our Christmas opening there at the lake. So they're going to be out there showing off their drumming skills. So we're excited for that. Okay, so that's nice. and you also said there was going to be some performers. I'm assuming these are musicians. We're gonna um, well, there's live music downtown for the people shopping downtown open house. There's a live band from six to nine for those guys down there, along with carriage rides and Santa's secret elves. At the lake, we are having um, we've got some choirs coming in, oh, okay. the drum line, a couple of other. Um, Things coming in to perform on the stage. So performances all over the place this evening. Lots of fun to be had in the city of Gaiman tonight. Okay. And so we have uh, that. We got, uh, the, now you mentioned the band that will be playing. Is that a marching band? Is it a rock band? Uh, what, what can you tell me about the um, band? They are a rock band from Alva. There's oh, a group okay. of, three, of three gentlemen. And um, you can find their bio on our Facebook page. And, and it talks a little bit about what they what they perform, but yeah, they're going to be here doing some performances for us and and keeping things entertained downtown. So I'm I'm hoping I remember uh, when Twisted Sister performed Christmas carols on the Tonight Show. Oh. 
<laughs> I, I'm, I'm hoping for something like that. Okay, I, I, well, you we'll know, see what D happens. Snyder, D <laughs> Snyder was all dressed up and he was going, "Come, let us adore." You didn't, you didn't change the channel off of that when you were flipping. When you, you were, saying, you were stuck there. Yeah, yeah, sure. that was that was uh, one of the great uh, events and one of the great guests I think that uh, Jay Leno had. So anyway, we're talking with Erica Maddox of the Chamber of Commerce here. Uh, in Guymon, Oklahoma, we're talking about the Christmas celebrations, and it's a real big event uh, going on this Friday night. Uh, you know, there are 30 stores that are going to be on. They're going to be lighting the uh, annual angel tree, uh, the 2023 angel tree. Uh, so there's a and, and 30 stores will be open. So everything, you know, the, the downtown and there are a lot of great places for gifts downtown i mean myself just trying to walk as a salesman and all that you know a lot of times you say, well what's left downtown there are really you know you mentioned that santa's going to be going to uh for instance the, the famous cheese store in town uh but just lots of things right there and uh that'll be going on and so opening this week and all that and you can uh, go check that out uh like i said take the kids to see santa claus uh take them on uh, in the park and for the Christmas Village with the open house and such. And as you mentioned before, uh, the Guymon Chamber of Commerce, which I'm going to make sure we're going to like right now. I can't believe we didn't. We want to, you know, here, <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm doing this as we speak. Uh, is, and the Guymon of Chamber, uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, they're on their Facebook page, which really you ought to be checking out anyway, uh, it'll provide a link for the Guymon Chamber of Commerce website, as well as a phone number if you do have any questions or email if you prefer uh, about what is going on in all this. Now, a, a few other things here that I, I noticed here on your website, um, and I, I saw this, uh, the OPSU Alumni and Friends of uh, Oklahoma State Panhandle License, uh, they have a pool, the swimming pool is reopening. That I found to be kind of interesting. Yes, and at the Noble Center, it's been closed for some repairs, but they're getting that opened back up. So, so um, yeah, I mean that's not, so you could stay in shape during the uh, winter time and all this. I enjoyed that. I, I do want to go back to the Christmas celebration and all this. Uh, you know, it hits big here on December first and this weekend, but the lights will still be there. Are there going to be other events going on later on in the month going up to Christmas? There, well, the lights, of course, out at Sunset Lake will be um, up the entire month of December, so you can go out and enjoy those any evening that you would like to go out. Um, and then, of course, there's the Christmas Village uh, Craft Fair is tomorrow. The High School Musical is tonight and tomorrow night as well. So a couple other things to add to your schedule for this weekend. Um, and then Things, I mean, of course, shopping and all of those things are still going to be available downtown throughout the Christmas season. Sure. So we'll see what else pops up to to be available. But yeah, if you're if you're liking and following the Guyman Chamber Facebook page, you're going to know what's going on. Okay. In, in and around. Town. So go check check that out. And like I said, the main things though today, Santa Claus will have uh, the train in the park. Uh, there'll be a uh, band downtown. There'll be uh, drum lines in the park and such. I mean, this is going to be quite the event to check out. Uh, so, yeah, we're uh, looking forward to seeing that going on in Guymon. And, uh, yeah, I have said this. I mean, obviously, Guymon isn't New York City, but when you consider the Oklahoma Panhandle being the largest town and being a place where people have moved to over the, in uh, recent years, it helps, and this is one of the things I'd like to do, is make it as cosmopolitan as possible. And I think you, you know, we've talked a little bit about that. And so for the area, you know, things like this help the area being more cosmopolitan. And, uh, you know, being a thing, okay, there's nothing to do. Well, wait a minute, there's, you know, Christmas here and all that. I think that most, you know, small children meeting Santa Claus is something to do. Oh, I, I, I see, I seem to remember myself at that age. But as I said, also with the, the shopping and, and the music and the lights and the festivities, I, I was curious about the high school musical. I mean, you know, we know of the high school musical films that have come out in recent years and all that. And now, you know, I remember on South Park, them parodying them and so on and so forth. And uh, for that matter, I remember the pirate shortstop at one time dating the lead of the movies i um no not jordy mercer i know he was a native oklahoman but that was not uh, who was going anyway but here's the what i'm trying to get to uh 
is this a high school musical like a traditional high school musical of singing songs or is this in the modern sort of film version of high school musical no this is going to be more along the traditional lines they're actually performing frozen junior this year okay so um it starts every it starts tonight and tomorrow night at seven admission is ten dollars at the door so you can go out and see what a wonderful group of high school students we have performing with the choir and everything out there so okay. It'll be a fantastic opportunity for you to support our support our high school kids. Okay. So. All right. Well, uh, and that high school musical is taking place where tonight? It will be at the high school in the high school auditorium. And do you know what time? At seven. Seven o'clock. So, so I mean, you can hit all kinds of things. This yeah. Evening and yeah. Make it work. Lots of music. Lots of uh, of getting get, uh, shopping. This sort of thing. Lots of stuff going on. So go to downtown Guyman this evening. And really, I guess the festivities begin with Santa Claus dropping in at City Hall 545 via helicopter. Yes, absolutely. Do you know I, d- d- the helicopter, does it have a name like Vixen or Blitzen or anything <laughs> like have that? I no have idea. no idea. We'll have to ask <laughs> yeah. Santa that when he gets here. <laughs> he comes down the Whirly Bird <laughs> and all that. We'll see what, you know, and all this. Anyway, she's Erica Maddox, uh, Guyman Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for stopping by and letting us know. I definitely want to check this out. And so look forward to meeting all of you in Guyman here. I'm Marky Bills. When we come back, it'll be time for Idiotic Wimp Radio. And then we'll go to the board members of the American Theater who will be joining us. No. All right. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Erica. We'll be back after this. Ag News from the Vidal America Ag Network. I'm Andy Hoosier. It's time again for another Larry Steckline report. Well, this time around, November 1 cattle on feed report, rather interesting for me. Not necessarily so to the cattlemen or to the boys on the Mercantile Exchange, uh, although it did shake them up for a day or two on the Merck. Um, total cattle on feed November 1 compared to a year ago up 2%. Placed in October up 4%. The average trade guess up 7%. You'd think that would shake somebody. Probably did for a while. And marketings down 3%. The trade was guessing it to be down 2%. So We've got one figure that really stands out to me, and that's the placement figure. Why was it down considerably more than what the trade was guessing? Well, I would say if the trade was guessing that we had a big sell-off of cattle during the drought, that there'd be less cattle around, wouldn't there? Makes sense to me. But in any event, it shook a few of them up. Mercantile Exchange took a little bit of a hit. But in any event, we got ourselves back on in the saddle, so to speak, because I think our prices will be pretty much like they have been the past two, three, four months. And we'll be hanging in there pretty good, no doubt about that. I still feel that there's going to be a time here when we're going to see less cattle than we uh, have expected or these reports show. And I don't know, that feeling could be rheumatism. I'm a little worried about, about that. But if it is rheumatism, I got to tell you, somebody was wrong a few months ago when the drought was full swing because everybody said we were going downhill in numbers. Ag News from the Mid-America Ag Network. Good morning. This is Kerry with the Eldorado Livestock Auction. This week we're expecting a lighter run because of the weather. Uh, we'll have a, a run of four or 500 head of cattle. Five and six year old Angus cows with Galvey cross calves at their side. We've got another group of eight uh, running age Angus cows with calves. This week or any of our coming up sales, give us a call at 316 320 3212, and you can see a full list of all our consumers. Eldorado El Dorado Livestock Auction, two and a half miles east of El Dorado on Highway 54 and online at eldoradolivestock.com. Westwood One is your exclusive radio home for Monday Night Football. Hi, everyone. This is Kevin Harlan. 
Join me and Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner every Monday night to listen to all the thrilling NFL action. Tom Brady, Cooper Cup, Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Donald, Derrick Henry, T.J. Watt, Josh Allen, and more. The league's top players are on display on Monday nights right here. This is the Big Talker, 1210 AM and 1063 FM, KGYN. Save time with the Smart Hub app from TCEC, because life shouldn't have to stop when your bills are due. Get the Smart Hub app today and set up reoccurring automatic payments so you can get back to what's most important. It's smart, simple, and easy. Learn how to save time today at tcec.coop slash pay. Your Tri-County Electric Cooperative. Call them at 580-652-2418 or online at tcec.coop. Weather on KGYM brought to you by the Tri-County Electric Cooperative, proudly serving the Panhandle area since 1945. Find out more information at tcec.coop. Tri-County Electric, a touchstone energy and national rural electric cooperative. Some clouds in the morning will give way to mainly sunny skies for the afternoon. Our high will be 45 degrees, winds northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, we'll see temperatures reach down to 22 degrees with a few clouds overnight. Winds out of the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And tomorrow, Saturday, it'll be 52 degrees per hour with your five-state big talker weather. I'm Marky e. Bilson. At 735, it's currently 19 degrees. The five-state big talker, KGYN. We are back. And since the women of the American theater will be showing up here uh, before too long, let me just, uh, well, let me go with Idiotic Wimp Radio. What is Idiotic Wimp Radio? It's one of my favorite things because it's very easy. To do that there are it, it, wacky little things to talk about to your audience, and it winds up being things like celebrity birthday. And, and, and you're reciting, you know, oh, Charlene Till, 65. You start to think, boy, everyone's you know, old. And you start to think, uh, what you're saying, if you're saying, if you're saying, and maybe this is some information to be all that, but nevertheless. But I will say this the, there is some history to be made, and and that's because it goes to round in Pittsburgh, okay? Uh, 1813, the company, you know, Monty, the same date, the same date, the same station opened at the Bomb Boulevard and St. Clair Street in Pittsburgh. Which is what I'm deciding to do that one in. Because these people are the guy in the radio. And she's like, what are you doing? 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 And that's there. The gas station is no more. It was a Gulf station. It was before Gulf even had the old orange disc logo. And I know there aren't any Gulf stations. Uh, in In this part of the country anymore, you know, the ba- T Boone Pickens pretty much did away with Gull, you know, if you want to know the story there. But uh, the situation comes out with uh, bon- uh, that at this area, uh, there's a shell station right nearby it. 
But I mention this because remember I told you also in this date the Ford Motor Company introduced the first moving assembly line. Now back then in the era of Model A's and Model T's, the uh, assembly lines and all this, the factories, uh, a lot of those buildings are still around. And what really intrigues me is that one of those buildings that they built the Fords in back in the 19, in 1913, in the 1920s, all this, one of those factories is within walking distance, like two blocks away from where the first gas station uh, was in Pittsburgh. And Bomb Boulevard has this tremendous, it's on Bomb Boulevard. They both are, you know, this one is on the corner of Bomb and Moorwood, like anyone really knows that. There is a gas station on the corner of Bomb and, Boulev and uh, Moorwood. And yes, it's also a grocery store. Well, convenience store. But anyway, I, and so when I saw that coming out, I was just, you know, very fascinated by the fact that, you know, today, 1913, Ford Motor Company introduced its first moving assembly line. Now I'm trying to figure out, because I know this, the building that is there, they're trying to get it, you know, historic designation, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're ever to go there, they actually have in the windows of the building now uh, big pictures up talking about the automotive history of the area, because like I said, they made Fords there years ago, Model A's, Model T's, that sort of things. And then right by the, I'm wondering if these, uh, this was happened uh, on the same day in the same general area. Ford Motor Company introducing the first moving assembly line on 1913 and the first gas station, December 1st, 1913, opening up down the street from uh, a Ford Motor Company, what would be a Ford Motor Company assembly line and factory on Bomb Boulevard in Pittsburgh. So there you go. Hmm. That's my little knowledge of right there, you know. Britney Spears turns 42 tomorrow. She was born on the same day as Lucy Liu. All the pretty girl, I, I, all the pretty women. That's what I'm, you know, all that. A person that I admire, Bulldog Briscoe on Frasier. Dan Butler. You know, sports talk show host. I mean, come on. You know, they had to get rid of all the people that are on money right now and just put on sports talk show host. There's not a more important... It is a proud profession. Dan Butler, he played Bulldog uh, on Frasier, and he turned 69 today. So he's getting in that sort of like, uh, that sort of uh, Tony Bruno era and all this. Favorite actress of mine, Holly Marie Combs from Charmed. She was Piper. She was the middle one. She turns 50. My goodness. A few years ago, she did a reality series where she and Shannon Doherty was undergoing. She's Shannon Doherty hasn't been in good health lately. She's got stage four cancer. Uh, but a few years ago, they did a reality series where Holly Marie Combs and Shannon Doherty uh, traveled around the country, and uh, you know they stopped and they'd go to Kentucky or they'd see things. You know, and they so they went on a road trip together, which, you know, I kind of enjoyed watching that because I always, like I said, my, one of my uh, crushes as a uh, young adult was Shannon Doherty. Holly Marie Combs was the Jan Brady of Charmed, if you will, only she made it really sexy. Now, I mean, she had uh, her own boyfriend and they got married and if memory serves, what was it? There Was it Leo in, in uh, Charmed? See, it, it was about good witches. It was about Wiccans and all this. And uh, that also fascinated me because I used to date a Wiccan and all this stuff. But, uh, yeah, I always thought that Charmed was sort of the modern day uh, of its time, Charlie's Angels, because you had these three beautiful brunette women, Shannon Doherty, Holly Marie Combs, and Alyssa Milano. And then Alyssa Milano and Shannon Doherty couldn't get along, so they killed off Shannon Doherty's character, Prue, and made Alyssa Milano the star, and uh, Rose McGowan came in instead. And so it's telling then that Holly Marie Combs and Shannon Doherty would do the reality show and they would be the ones that bond and not Alyssa Milano and Holly Marie Combs. But yeah, that Holly Marie Combs was sort of the neutral one. Everybody, she was one that everyone liked then, the most likable one on Charm. She'll be 50 tomorrow. That's one of the, yeah, okay, so... All right, here. Uh, so those are the things that uh, we're going into to talk about. Uh, let's see here. Another thing to they talk, our partners' weird habits. 
Now, this is the thing that they, you know, talk about you know, just listing out things. You know, she eats hair. Sir, you're dating a pussycat. I don't know how else to describe that. To I hate to be the one to break that to you, but uh, yes, you are uh, dating a pussycat, okay? If she eats hair, I hate to tell you that. Here's one with Santa Claus coming to town. Imagine this. A burglar is stuck in a chimney. So what do you do? You call the police. In Germany... Police were called to a hardware store after the alarm went off. They found nothing wrong. Shortly after, they were called to the same address by a man trapped in the business's chimney. So, do you think that he was trying to say that, uh, you know, look, I, uh, I am a... Uh, I am actually Santa Claus. I tell you this, I'm Santa Claus. I'm trying to deliver hammers to all the good hardware store people. And... I mean, you think if you were trying to rob a hardware store, you might have a file or something like that. So this is the, so that's what's uh, going on right here. Uh, of course, what with the uh, Christmas celebration going on, men are bad gift givers, they say, which I can kind of uh, believe. But yes, here's one of the things here. Now, see, I would support this. I would support this. Okay, what do you give uh, a gift certificate to a weight loss clinic? Now, see, you're trying to keep them healthy. Right there. That's that's important. I think that, yeah, I, you know, people are too sensitive and all that. I'm I'm big on that. So that's the latest incarnation. Oh, wait, I got to say this on Sunday. Wait a minute. Let's go in all this. Actually, Sunday is Holly Marie Coombs birthday. She's 50. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne. Holly Marie Coombs and Ozzy Osbourne share a birthday. What do you think about that? Holly was tw uh, Ozzy was 25 and already in Black Sabbath when uh, Holly Mary Combs was born. But still, it needs to be said. And uh, Ozzy will be 75 on Sunday as well. So there you are. You can go listen to Black Sabbath and you know, Bark at the Moon and uh, Shot in the Dark and all that. We'll be talking about the American Theater. They've got a lot of events coming up this week weekend as well as the entire Christmas season and we're going to be joined by the board members showing up Sarah Atha and Ashley Ortiz they're here and we'll be having them on next what do you talk about with your friends the last mushy romance book you read or last night's thrilling come from behind buzzer beater tomorrow's conversation starter begins right here on the Cowboy Sports Network, powered by Learfield. When it's OK State basketball, you know it's the Big Talker, 1210 KGYN. Get the best of both worlds with PTCI's Totally Unlimited Bundle. Now, families can share unlimited cell data and experience great internet without caps or overage fees. And if you bundle now, you'll save even more with a month of free unlimited cell data. Plus, trade in your phone today and get $800 off the newest device. Offer expires December 31st. For more details, visit ptci.net. Some exclusions may apply. Why? Why do we ignore the things that give us pause, that seem out of place, that don't feel right? The answer to why defines who we are. So if you see something, why do you say something? I see safe for my friends. For my community. For my family. For each other. Because all of this matters. We all have something worth protecting. So why do you see safe? Report suspicious activity to local authorities. If you see something, say something. The Five State Big Talker, KGYN. Some of you may have heard some of that conversation that we were having off the air. I noticed that I left the mic on here. Anyway, I'm Marky e. Bilson, and we're joined here today by Sarah Atha and Ashley Ortiz. They're members of the American Theater Board. Uh, Ashley is the president. Sarah is a member of the board, stopped in. And with all the Christmas celebrations, you know, what goes on after our Friday celebrations here in Guymon, where Santa Claus comes to town at 545? You can read about all that's going on in the uh, Facebook page of the Chamber of Commerce, Guymon Chamber of Commerce. 
But one of the inter- the uh, exciting things is that the American Theater is going to be starting up again and showing Christmas this weekend and then throughout this year. Uh, it, I guess uh, A Wonderful Life is going to be shown on Sunday. Tell us about the movies that are sh- going to be shown in American Theater. Oh, we said just start Wonderful Life. Everyone knows about that. Uh, all of the others is, is going to be on Sunday at 2.30. Um, want to make it clear that these are all free admission. Our phone is 038. Zero zero nine. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the three people who are going to be on the table. I'm going to take a look at the three people who are going to be on the table. And I put the wrong number on there. So I'm going to call this police landline that I've blown up by people who are going to be for this movie. And thanks for listening for you know, sponsoring this movie. So I'll take that one. I'll take that one. I was going to say, I know a lot of people go online. And I'm here. I know you have a uh, Facebook page. And I guess, could you make a reservation through the Facebook page as well? Well, we're asking people to start using our new cell phone because we did we upgraded our entire phone system. Thanks, shout out to PTCI who really hooked us up. Um, but we uh, we have. Have a new box office system that we're trying to implement and one of those things is utilizing our text message box office so if people can text um to the to that cell phone number we have a box office personnel who's 24 7 on that getting back to people making sure we have correct reservations but um if i can go through and just let everybody know the movies that we're going to be showing yes yes how to reserve for them um we have a lineup of four different shows right now and the first one, like we said, is going to be on Sunday, the 3rd, at 2.30. We're showing It's a Wonderful Life. If you want to reserve for that, all you need to do is text 338-0019 with the word wonderful, and we'll get you down. Um, same thing for the next weekend on December 8th. We have National Lampoon Christmas Vacation, sponsored by Herbel Real Estate. Text Lampoon to 338-0019 for that one, starting at 2.30 on Friday, or 2.30, 6.30 on Friday evening. Um, the following week in December 15th, we have the Polar Express, so uh, just the same, text 338-0019, the word express, and we'll get you reserved for a 630 spot on December 15th. And if you want to see Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone on December 22nd, also at 530, text Potter to 338-0019. So there's a lot of uh, great Christmas movies coming up all there. But then after this, uh, you're going to be putting on a play, I think, uh, you, you told me at the American Theater uh, this spring. Can you tell Beauty and the Beast? Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on there and when you're hoping to debut Beauty and the Beast. The performance will be the first two weekends of March, and it will be directed by a group of individuals who have been very involved with the theater, and they're actually having auditions early next week, December 4th and 5th in the evening. So you guys can just show up at 6 o'clock. Um, all of the details of the positions needed are on the Facebook, or you can message that Facebook if you have any questions or need any arrangements. Now, you said there are going to be two showings of Beauty and the Beast in March, or how many are are you looking to make that uh, go, running like uh, through the springtime or just two uh, two showings? There's, there's six total productions over two weekends. Okay. And those are going to be the first, second, and third, and the 8th, 9th, and 10th of March. Um, and like she said, on Monday and Tuesday night at 6 p.m., we have our auditions at the American Theater Building. Okay, so if you're interested in acting, that sort of thing, okay, this is kind of big. It's time to, you know, get the get the the nerves away and and try out for this stuff, okay? Uh, so anyway, you were saying here, uh, Sarah, here. There are positions of all ages needed. Uh, well, you know, I think that one thing that we get hung up on with the theater is you go out and you tell people, you know, get involved in the theater. We really, you know, we're looking for people to get involved. And they think, oh, well, uh, I, I am afraid of the stage. <laughs> you know, yeah. I have mm-hmm. terrible stage fright. Honestly, I would say that at least 70% of what goes on at the theater is off stage. If you feel like you can help out with concessions, if you just want to show up and help, you know, host or clean or chaperone, 
or stage manage or learn to run lights or a sound technician, woodworkers, construction. I mean, we use all kinds of skill sets at this community theater. It is a community theater propped up by those volunteers, and we can use all different kinds of people. So if your kid's looking to get involved, if you're looking to get involved, if you want something with the family that you can do, we're your place. We, we take everybody and we love on them. We very much have a family atmosphere in our volunteers. No, I'll just say this. My mother, who was in college, she was involved in the theater as well and, you know, studying and thinking, do I want to study art or do I want to study drama? She eventually went art and became a college professor. But while she was a college professor, you know, colleges put on plays and such, and she would actually perform in them. And that was how that she came about, you know, so uh, that was, uh, and you're just, now, you know, Marky, I mean, you know, we have spots open for you, too. And I'm I, I talk shows, I, you know, I want to watch ball games. I'm not going to do, you know, all this sort of stuff. But so it's not for everybody, but it's that sort of thing. If you ever had the idea to perform, you know, you say, gee, I wonder what it would be like. You're offering the chance to hear at the American theater. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Um, amateur, <laughs> amateur acting is our forte. <laughs> I want to, we've got about five minutes here left. I wanted to ask you, I mean, it's rather obvious uh, why you would choose for this Sunday at 2.30, A Wonderful Life to kick off the Christmas movies. But I'm just wondering uh, what the choice for a Christmas vacation, uh, Polar Express and Harry Potter Sorcerer on the next Fridays following this, uh, this Sunday at 2.30, and those showings will be a Friday at 6.30. Why those Christmas movies to be shown? Well, National Lampoon was 100% Rebel Real Estate. They, you know, they wanted to yeah. sponsor some of these movie nights, and they said, "This is my favorite Christmas movie. This is the one I want to show." They, no, there you go. Okay. We showed that one. Um, Polar Express, I think, is just about as obvious as It's a Wonderful Life. It's just a classic um, now, anyway. And then Harry Potter was kind of like a me thing. I okay. ABC's 20 Days of Christmas or whatever they do, they always have the Harry Potter marathon, and that was my favorite series to jump on and watch. So, um, and I know that there's some other people who, it's kind of like Die Hard. Some people consider it a Christmas movie, but it's kind of, it's really not. But, um, so that's the reason for that one. <laughs> we have a, a huge debate. A friend of mine who does talk radio in uh, Pittsburgh named Paul Zeiss is insistent that Trading Places is a Christmas movie. Mm. He is insistent <laughs> that that is, it came out in the summer. No, that's the best, you know, in Philadelphia, it's 50 bucks. That's, you know, and so, you know, if you want to say that in Philadelphia, it's 50 bucks instead of Merry Christmas around here, that sort of thing. You know, I think everybody will know then that you listen to the five states sunrise. Uh, so we're talking here to Sarah Atha and Ashley Ortiz of the American Theater. Between these Christmas movies, uh, running this Sunday at 2.30 with A Wonderful Life and then followed Fridays at 6.30 after that uh, until Christmas, is there anything going on be in the winter months between the Christmas movies and the March showings of Beauty and the Beast at the theater? Or is it just uh, rehearsals at the American Theater? Yeah, the um, stage... And spaces will be pretty tied up with props for that Beauty and the Beast. If you're wanting to get involved, like Ashley said, you can come help us work on those things, paint, all of that. We do meet with our volunteers monthly, and you will be able to keep up to date on the things coming and bring ideas to the table. Uh, and so our next meeting would be December 12th, or December 18th, my bad, at 6 o'clock, and we'd be happy for you guys to join us. Okay. Yeah, there's. Uh, if you're looking to get involved in the board meetings or any other aspect of the theater, we have a couple of ways that you can reach out to us. Um, we've post been posting a lot on our Facebook page, Gaiman Community Theater. We also have an email that we check regularly, regularly, gaiman.community.theater at gmail.com. And just to clarify, theater for us is spelled T-H-E-A-T-R-E, not E-R. So uh, gaiman.community.theater at gmail.com. And also, once again, you can always reach out to our phone number, 580-338-0019. There may be alternate spellings, but I know people get uh, really upset when they call it the theater.